Well, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is feeling great this morning, despite the dreary weather. The fall is finally upon us, and I'm actually happy. This summer was not the best summer for us. There was a lot of humidity, a lot of rain. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'm really excited to be here. So thank you for inviting me to be your guest speaker for Hispanic Heritage Month and for giving me the opportunity to speak about my work, who I am, and my Latina heritage. My name is Nancy Ruffin. I am a writer who has published four books. I host my own weekly podcast that streams on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. I am a wife, and I am a mother of two little girls ages six and three. I am also the daughter of Puerto Rican parents who have dedicated their lives to instilling in me and my sister the value of education, pride, and self-respect. And it is because of those values that I am very aware of how I show up in the world. The way I present myself and carry myself is fueled by my understanding that whenever I show up anywhere, I am not only representing myself, but I am representing my ancestors, my parents, and all who have paved the way for me. And today I want to share three stories with you. The first story is about choices. I haven't ended up where I am by coincidence or by luck. I am where I am because I have an amazing family who refused to let me be anything other than great. I have family who even when I made mistakes, did not allow me to define myself by those mistakes. They taught me that mistakes are opportunities to learn and grow and make better choices the next time. And it is because of them that I am relentless in the pursuit of my dreams. I have worked incredibly hard to get to where I am. Even though there were many times when I was growing up that I had no clue where my life would end up. As a teenager, I was rebellious. I fought with my parents all the time. I ran away from home. My father was incredibly strict and there were many times where we didn't see eye to eye. I mean, but what teenager really sees eye to eye with, with their parents, right? Um, so his strictness eventually resulted in me lying all the time because he wouldn't allow me to do some of the things that my friends were doing. I wasn't allowed to hang out in the street or linger in parks or go to random places without having a specific reason for being there. See, my father knew that if you let kids hang in the street, trouble would eventually find them. And I knew this well, because when I was 16, my then 15-year-old cousin was murdered by someone we all went to school with. See, my cousin was a street kid. And by the time he was 15, he was already a dad. He had a newborn daughter at the time of his death. And unfortunately, he didn't have parents like mine. He was lost to the streets because no one cared enough to keep him off the streets. His mother was addicted to crack, and his father was an absentee father who moved to Puerto Rico and started another family. While I don't mean for this to be a samba story, I share it because I believe it is an important part of my story. Because in order to understand how I got to where I am, you have to know where I came from. Because success or being successful is not based solely on what you achieve, but also on what you've overcome. And growing up in that type of environment where I always had to watch my back and pay attention to my surroundings, instilled in me a toughness and resilience I'm not sure I would have developed had I grew up in another environment. Two of my closest friends in high school were already mothers by the time we graduated. They are now both grandmothers, and here I am just starting to raise my own children. So what I believed back then as my father being too strict was really him trying to protect my sister and I from the environment we were being raised in. Teen pregnancy, death, and jail were about the only options in my community. And had it not been for the strong family foundation I had, 
I could have very easily ended up like my friends. I was lucky to have parents who cared about what I became in life and who always reminded me that our choices, whether good or bad, have consequences. I saw firsthand how the choices we make affects the direction of our lives. I saw in my neighborhood the consequences of the choices people were making, whether it was selling drugs or committing a crime or having unprotected sex, there were consequences to those choices. And all of us in our own lives have the power of choice. And that holds true for every area in your lives. As you grow and as you continue to have different experiences and different encounters with other people, you will be faced with many situations that will require you to make a choice. There may be times you may feel pressured to do something you may not really want to do. Soon, you will have to choose what college you want to go to or decide if you even want to attend college. You'll have to, you'll have to choose what subject you want to major in or what you want to pursue a career in. And I will tell you that the older you get, the more difficult the choices become because life is a series of choices and each choice you make takes you down a different path. There will be times when you make great choices and you will feel like you're on top of the world. But then there will also be moments where you will question every decision you've ever made and it will feel like the entire world is on your shoulders. But I will tell you that there is no choice you make that you can't recover from, even the bad ones. As long as you take responsibility for your bad choices, own up to them, and learn from them, there's no mistake you can't bounce back from. And I will tell you, like I tell my own kids, mistakes are okay. It is only through mistakes and failure that you'll learn. So don't be afraid to fail, and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just don't make the same mistake twice. Now the next story, I want to share with you is about difficult moments. When I was in high school, I struggled. And not because I wasn't smart, but because I allowed one difficult moment to affect my entire high school experience. High school was tough for me. In fact, I'd say that high school is probably tough for many of us. And even though it's only four years of our life, those years feel like a lifetime when you're in them. So during my freshman year in high school, I got attacked by a group of girls because of a boy. A boy who wasn't even my boyfriend. In fact, I didn't even like him. He was just a friend, but apparently this girl liked him and she got upset when she saw me sitting with him during lunch. And so she decided that she and her friends would beat me up after school. So imagine, I had no clue that this was going to happen. I leave school and I'm heading to the subway as I did every other day, but there was like these huge crowds. Kind of like you know when something is gonna happen because everyone is out and everyone is walking towards the same direction, but I was clueless that I was the person that was gonna be attacked. Thankfully though, I wasn't seriously injured and partly because of a friend who intervened. But that event terrified me. It was only two months into the school year. I was new at the school. I didn't really have many friends. And so this traumatic event happened to me. Uh, and even though my parents went up to the school and the girls got suspended, I was still afraid to go back to school because I was afraid they'd attack me again. And then I was afraid to tell my parents I was afraid because I didn't want to seem like a punk. So, instead of telling my parents how I was really feeling, I started cutting school. I missed my entire freshman year. And as a result, I ended up having to attend night school and summer school and after school school. And so every school that there was, I had to attend in order to make up for the year I had missed. And still, I graduated six months late. I missed my graduation ceremony, I wasn't allowed to attend my prom 
or the senior class trip or do any of the fun things you do your senior year in high school, all because of the consequences of my choices. I missed out on what could have been some of the best moments in my life because I chose to cut school and not tell my parents how traumatized I was from that experience. In hindsight, I know, I, I know if I would have expressed to my parents how I was feeling, they would have helped me navigate through what at the time was a difficult moment. I was only 14 years old and was not equipped with the necessary tools to help me cope. In fact, what I realize now is that I didn't even know how to ask for help. And so though it's been many years since I was your age, I remember well the pressures of being a teenager. And I understand how now there's even more pressure on you. And I share that story with you because I want you to know we all encounter difficult moments, whether it's in high school or college or at work or just in life. There will be bumps and roadblocks and challenges. There will be people who don't like us, people who lie on us and make up stories about us, and we really can't control other people's actions, but we can control how we react. There will be times when someone close to you betrays you. You will lose friendships. But how we navigate through those difficulties is what will make the difference in our lives. Also, being able to ask for help from those who love and care about us makes those tough moments a little less challenging. You don't have to go through life alone or believing that you aren't tough enough or strong enough if you admit you're afraid. No matter what you go through, know that it's okay to be scared and it's okay to ask for help. The next story I wanna share with you is about following your heart. Because whether it's a dream, a romantic relationship, or anything else, the heart always knows what it wants, even when we try to convince it otherwise. See, in my family, education was the single most important thing in my household. So from as early as I can remember, Going to college was never an option. Like we, me and my sister were going to college. That was it. And even though I have thousands of dollars in student loan debt now, I did it as my parents wished and went to college. I majored in accounting because it was important to my parents that I was in a profession where I could earn decent money and not have to struggle like they did. And so when I first started college, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I definitely didn't want to be an accountant, but because I had taken two bookkeeping classes in high school, I figured, okay, I'll major in accounting. It made the most sense. In hindsight, I'm not sure why I thought that made sense, because I absolutely suck at math. Numbers scare me. <laughs> And my strength is and has always been in writing. It's what I've always loved to do since as long as I can remember. I've been writing my own stories since the second grade. So logically, I should have majored in creative writing or journalism. But because writers, or anyone in the arts for that matter, are usually depicted as struggling artists or as a profession that doesn't really earn a sustainable living, I never considered it. And it wasn't something that my parents encouraged. Even though they supported any decision I made, it was more important for them to know that I was going to be in a profession where I would be secure. So I majored in accounting and struggled the entire four years in college in my accounting classes. I was miserable, but I stuck it through, and thankfully, I ended up earning my bachelor's degree in accounting, and eventually I earned a master's degree in healthcare management. But all the while, I was still writing, working full time, and writing in my spare time. 
I was also at this point performing my poems at open mics throughout the city. And the more I wrote, the more I found myself wanting to share what I had written. Eventually, I created a blog, and that blog became the first book I published. So the more I shared and the more I performed, I eventually started getting hired to feature at poetry events and to speak at panels and conferences. It was the first time I realized that I could make money doing what I loved. See, what I didn't understand for my family was that it's really hard for anyone to conceptualize something when they have not seen firsthand that success. So because my parents didn't know any successful writers or anyone who was successful in the arts personally, they couldn't comprehend that I could somehow find success doing what I loved. So I continued my education and while I did earn my degrees, I discovered that what I said had value and people were willing to pay me for it. And the more time I devoted to my writing, the more opportunities I continued to get. My work has afforded me the opportunity to attend one of the most prestigious writing residencies in the country, to study with some of the best and critically acclaimed writers in the world. My fourth book was selected as the best self-help book in the 2017 International Latino Book Awards, the biggest awards ceremony for writers of Hispanic heritage in the country. Some of my poems appear in college textbooks and are being taught in schools in California and Washington, D.C. My writing resulted in me creating my own weekly podcast as another way to share my voice and my stories. This past year, my podcast was nominated for an award for best podcast. And just last week, I attended the New York City premieres for the films Night School and The Hate You Give, where I had the opportunity to interview Kevin Hart, Tiffany Haddish, Fat Joe, Mac Biles, Amanda Stenberg, and how many of you are familiar with the Kiki Challenge, the In My Feelings Challenge? So I was able to interview the Shiggy Show, who was the guy who kind of invented, you know, Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? So I was able to interview him. And so never in my wildest dreams, when I was growing up in Brooklyn, had I imagined this would be my life. And so I say all this to say, your heart always knows what it wants, even when you don't. We all have been blessed with a gift and a talent. For me, it's writing. For you, it may be drawing or sewing or baking or playing video games, right? Some people are really good at that. Or someone among you may be a math whiz or the next Steve Jobs or the next Oprah or Beyonce. But the point I'm trying to make is that your heart already knows what it loves. That thing you love to do, that thing you're great at, that thing that makes you special is your gift. Your job is to figure out how to monetize that gift and then give it to the world. Because our gifts aren't for ourselves. They're to be shared with others. So go to school. Earn your education, but also follow your heart. The heart knows what it wants, and you will never be able to escape from your heart. One of my favorite quotes is from the book, The Alchemist, and it goes like this. Because wherever your heart is, that is where you'll find your treasure. In short, what that quote is saying, that whenever you follow your heart, that is where you will find your joy. Trust yourself and believe in yourself enough to chase every dream God places in your heart. The more you pursue your dreams, the more opportunities to realize that dream will present themselves. You may not know how, you may not know when, but the universe or God or the higher power has a way of putting in your path 
exactly what you need to make your dreams become a reality. So you just do the work and you let God handle everything else. As I conclude this portion of my speech, I just want to share some final thoughts. When I was asked to be a speaker here, I thought long and hard about the message I wanted to share with you all today. I am very conscious of my words because as a writer, words matter. So hopefully through my stories, you have found some inspiration. Storytelling is an incredible tool for connecting with others because what I've discovered whenever I've shared my story is that there is always someone in the audience who is going through or has gone through similar situations. So despite how different we think we all are, at our core, we all want the same things. And to quote the Declaration of Independence, essentially what we all want is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Some of us may want more specific things, like to be rich, or to have a big, beautiful house, or to drive a nice luxury car, or to travel around the world. But at its essence, what we really want is to live, to be free, and to be happy. For me, what I've always wanted most is to make my family proud. See, in my culture, pride is something that is instilled in us from birth. And when I think about my heritage, and think about what it means to be a Puerto Rican, what stands out for me is knowing that my family always has my back. Family has shaped who I am. And human nature naturally causes families to stick together. And you're loyal to those who share your last name, your bloodline, or even just your shared experiences. And family to me doesn't necessarily always mean someone in your bloodline, but instead could be found in that one close friend who you proudly claim as your cousin, even though there is no ancestral relation. See, for Latinos, when we love you and allow you into our lives, you automatically become family. And for a long time, when someone asked me, but well, what do Puerto Ricans have to be proud of? I could never give a well thought out or educated answer because I equated pride with the love I received from my family, the adoration I felt for the island that birthed my ancestors, and the joy I feel whenever I see our flag, a flag that for years was outlawed. So as I got older, I realized that those were reasons enough to be proud. So I no longer feel it's necessary to justify my pride. And unfortunately, Puerto Rico is now struggling to survive in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. But despite suffering the greatest financial and humanitarian crisis in its history, I am reminded that Puerto Ricans come from a long line of hardworking, resilient individuals many who have made indelible contributions to the world, be it on the island or here in the States. There's a long list of us who have contributed to politics, science, medicine, music, and the arts. We have produced poets like Julia de Burgos, astronauts like Joseph Michael Acaba, scientists like Olga Gonzalez Sanabria, inventors like Angel Rivero Mendez, athletes like Roberto Clemente, actresses like Rita Moreno, musicians like Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony, even Supreme Court justices like Sonia Sotomayor. Our contributions are everywhere. And it is because of them and all who came before me that I feel an incredible responsibility to honor the blood, sweat, and tears that were sacrificed in order for me to have the opportunities I have. That's why whenever I'm asked to speak about who I am, I'm honored. Because it allows me 
to speak for all those who came before me that worked, sacrificed, and made it possible for me to be seen and heard. My parents only have high school educations. My grandparents on both sides never made it past the sixth grade. Yet, here I am, a published author, with a book that went on to win an award. I've attended writing residencies with some of the best writers in the country. I am the host of my own weekly show. I have a bachelor's and master's degree. And I own my own home, all because of the choices I decided to make. And I have made plenty of mistakes, and you will too. But do not let your present mistakes define your future. Learn from your mistakes. Grow from them so that you make better choices next time. Believe in yourself and your God-given gifts. Embrace your individuality and what makes you different. People never remember the person who fits in. It's the person who stands out that they won't be able to forget. You were created for a reason. Your life has purpose, and it's your responsibility to figure out what that purpose is. My father recently said to me, remember, when it comes to our history and culture, it was handed down to us. We are just caretakers for the next generation. And he is correct. History and pride are passed on. It is our responsibility to honor and preserve our history while also adding to it so that we leave behind a legacy we can be proud of. My family showed me by their example to be proud of my Puerto Rican heritage while simultaneously teaching me to love everything that this country of ours has to offer. They have taught me that pride is instilled. It's what you carry with you every single day of your life. How you show up in the world matters. Make it count. So that concludes the first part of my speech. Does anyone have any questions or anything you want to chat about? Yes. Ooh, ah, you know, it's so interesting. I wasn't prepared for that question. <laughs> Because I haven't performed poetry in so long. I don't remember any offhand. I mean, I would have to Google, like Google it. Um, it might, yes, it might. Let me see if I, let me see if I can Google something. I don't have any of my poems on my website. Like they've all been published on others. But let me see if I can bring up something really quickly. You know what? I think I have one on my phone. Let me. <laughs> 